is a cautionary tale. A couple of years ago, US car giant Chevrolet launched a new model of the Tahoe, its grunty four-wheel drive. To promote it, Chevy asked all its loyal fans to participate in its advertising campaign. Chevy built a website which let visitors make and upload their own ads for the Tahoe, choosing from a menu of sexy driving shots, music and graphics. The company obviously believed fans would create loving hero ads, but what happened was this. The site was quickly hijacked by four-wheel drive haters and piss takers of every kind. Chevy had to yank the idea, but the mock ads are still out there on the internet, loudly heckling. Uh, Russell, what's to be learned from Chevy's branding exercise here? I don't think they should have got upset about it. If people are going to get involved, let them get involved. Even if they get involved and you don't like it, by saying I don't like it and pulling it off actually makes you look more foolish than um, you were in the first place. There are certain brands you should just never encourage people to make that kind of right. comment. Right, so this on. is it's like right idea, wrong company? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you know, marketing an SUV when we're at war with Iraq for oil, you know, I don't think that's a very good idea. And I think if they'd actually just done a little bit of research before they decided to run that campaign, they may have found that out. So. It wor it'll, it'll work for a fashion brand, something that people don't sort of hold dear to their hearts, but oil, you know, I don't think that's exactly... I think it's, it's also knowing your target, though. Yeah. I mean, who, who would be your average Chevy driver? You know, so they make this ad and they put it on TV, and then so your target puts down his banjo and turns to his sister and goes, we're going to make us some ad from <laughs> <laughs> Wait, What did they think was going to happen? <laughs> it's a big American good old car, you know? Yeah. I so what, what sort of product would this work for then? I actually like, I, 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 have, uh, I like them better after seeing that. I, I agree with Russell, I, I know that may sound strange, but I, uh, <laughs> I, I, I would have run them online, I wouldn't have pulled them. Uh, the Tahoe is a great example of an ad that backfired, but I, I bet it's not the only one the panel know about. Todd, you ever had one that backfired? I've had one, uh, it's one of my favourite ads that backfired. Uh, you may, I don't know if people remember it, do you remember an ad for Ski Yogurt with a guy called Larry? Uh, what are you reading there? Paperback? Uh, yeah, a paperback. Yeah, paperback. It's a nice blanket. Never trust Larry. Every time we ran that ad, the sales went like this. Why? And, and the main reason was, and it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fatal mistake, but the main reason is we underestimated and didn't clearly understand who the target market was. The target market was actually uh, young mums living in the suburbs. They didn't see what we saw. We made that ad for ourselves in the industry. You know, we, they didn't see what we saw. We saw a quirky, interesting, uh, funny character with a spoon. They saw Stalker. <laughs> Well, Matt, what about you? Well, I'm not going to talk about any of my own failures because... <laughs> well, why would you? Would you like you? me to mention yeah, yeah. a couple? <laughs> <laughs> so what about you, mate? Well, when I first started in advertising, I was told all advertising works, it's just a matter of how much. And I've believed that ever since. Really? You've got to be kidding me. Really? <laughs> because we have a guy with a spoon behind his back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what about you, mate? Oh, I, I, it hurts me to talk about this campaign because I think it's fantastic. It's one of my favourites. And it was, um, was launched in the dot-com era. It's for a, play, a company called Outpost.com. And the whole campaign is basically about getting people to remember the name. In an effort to get people to remember our name, Outpost.com, we contacted the local high school marching band and asked them to help us out. And to help make this memorable, we decided to release a pack of ravenous wolves. <laughs> That's good stuff. Every time they played the ad, um, I think um, hits on the website went up a minimum of 10,000. But no one had the foggiest idea what they did at Outpost.com. And after, after a year, they'd sold nothing. Like, <laughs> I Zero. believe their business was releasing ravenous wolves around. <laughs> <laughs> it was very successful.